today's class, uh, everybody should hear it and just examine themselves, all right? Every, in today's class, everybody should just hear it and examine themselves. If you ask these men, the classes, it's for, I ain't gonna lie, like majority of the time, 90 out of 100, I don't like prepare them in the week. Something happens, I say, oh, okay, should teach about that. Should teach about this, Something, okay, but well, we need to teach about that. So, listen to the, today's class and govern yourselves according to it, all right? All right, we're going to start at Proverbs chapter 15, verse 10. Today's title is titled, The Spirit of Deceit. All right, today's class is titled, The Spirit of Deceit. All right, so make sure you have your notebooks, your pens, your pocketbooks, your Bibles, and take good notes, all right? Because we have to realize, a lot of brothers always say, I don't roll in that spirit. I don't deal with that spirit. Okay, brother. Good for you. Good for you. You don't know what you're going to end up dealing with. You have to watch what you say. A lot of brothers say, I'll never deal with that. I don't roll like that. Okay, brother. I hear you. You know me. All right, I hear you, brother. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Read. And he that hateth reproof shall die. All right, so you wonder why would I start here when the, when the class is titled The Spirit of Deceit. We're going to lead our way up and build our way up to that spirit. But you have to go to the root of it. If you deal in the spirit of deceit, that's because you are not pleased with the judgment or the laws that are going forth. Meaning what? You have to go around that and do things in secret. But the root of all of that is because of this right here. Read uh, verse 10 again. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 10. Come on. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. The Bible said that correction is grievous to the man or to the sister that forsaketh the way. What is the way according to the, to the Bible? Who has that precept? The book of Hosea, chapter 14, verse 9. Come on. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things? It says, who is wise? Now, the wise man, he'll understand the way. He won't forsake the way, like it says in Proverbs 15. Read it again from the top. Hosea, chapter 14, verse 9. Come on. Who is wise, and he shall understand these things? Prudence. And he shall know them. Come on. For the ways of the Lord are right. Read that again. For the ways of the Lord are right. So the Bible says the ways of the Lord are right. That's the right way to go. But read Proverbs 15 and 10 again. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 10. Come on. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Meaning what? Correction is grievous to the brother or sister who forsakes the right way the, or the right thing to do. Read. And he that hateth reproof shall die. Brothers and sisters, listen. Listen. It says that he that hateth reproof, meaning what? The counsel? The correction? If you hate that, if you are advised a good thing to do, righteous according to the scriptures, and you really don't like it and it doesn't sit, sit good with you, what should happen, Jedi? And he that hateth reproof shall die. So if we want to live, what should we do? Follow the counsel. We should love it. We should run to it. We should be, hey, I want it. And you know what? I'm going to listen. I'm not just going to hear it. I'm going to do it. That's what we should run to. Psalms 36 and 1. Psalms chapter 36 and 1. Remember, the class is titled The Spirit of Deceit. Follow me. Read what you got. Psalms chapter 36 and verse 1. Come on. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. So those who are running in that spirit of I want to forsake the right way, I want to go against the counsel of the Lord, they don't have any fear. Now, who has the precept for fear? What you got? There's a few precepts for that. Now Psalms... 119 and verse 127. Let's read that one. That's a good one. 
The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 120. Come on. My flesh trembleth for fear of thee. Come on. And I am afraid of thy judgments. And, of, and thy God says, I'm sorry, King David says he is afraid of God's judgments. All right. Let's go back to Psalms 36 and 1. The book of Psalms, chapter 36 and verse 1. And remember, brothers and sisters, King David was called what? It starts with a P. He was what? Perfect. He was perfect. King David was perfect, and he says that he had fear of God's judgments. Aren't we supposed to be perfect? Didn't Jesus Christ say yes, that we're supposed to be perfect? Yes, sir. Now, let's read... The contrary part, Psalms 36 and 1. Psalms chapter 36 and verse 1. Come on. The transgression of the wicked. Now it says the transgression of the wicked. So the wicked brother and sister, this is what they say. Come on. Saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. Read. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes. In his what? In his own eyes. A lot of brothers and sisters like to think that they're better. They'll say it again. they better. They better. They know better. They know better than the prophets of God. That's what a lot of a lot of brothers and sisters like to roll in that spirit. Even though they know how to go about things, they know that we have rank structure, there's a hierarchy, there's a way to do this, there's a way to do that. But you know what? I'm saying in my own heart, I want to do it like this because I think this is more effective. Although it's already been proven, although it's already been tested, although you've only been in truth about one, two years, you understand, but you still want to try it out. Read on. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes. Come on. Until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Read. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. The words of what? Of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Iniquity and deceit. A lot of brothers and sisters, when they come to the Sabbath, hey, shalom. Hey, shalom, brother. Hey, it's real good to see you. Hey, I want to go over this topic. I want to talk about this. They want to appear to be a certain way, right? But their tongue is actually deceitful because they want everybody's mind to go one way. So the dirt that they're doing behind the scenes, nobody would ever even think that they're committing those acts. Now, like I stated before, listen to the, today's class. Listen to today's class and apply it to yourself. Be real with yourself. You know your own self. Is that it on that? No, sir. Read it. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. Come on. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. That's what he wants to make it seem like. Okay, you know what? Hey, this brother said they wise. You know what? They in the spirit. Yeah, you know what? I, I want to be like them. But little do you know. Sirach or Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha chapter 27 and verse 22. We're going to read down just a little bit. And if you have a new brother next to you, make sure he gets it, please. The book of Sirach, chapter 27 and verse 22. Come on. He that winketh with the eyes worketh evil. You got to watch out for brothers and sisters who like to flatter. All right? Who always like to be seen all up in your face. And I'm not saying, brothers and sisters, start thinking evil of your brother and sister just because, you know, they are friendly. That's not what I'm saying. Listen, the Bible says, he that winketh with the eyes worketh evil. Meaning what? You got some brothers and sisters that will be close to you, right? They'll smile on your face and say, hey, brother, hey, good to see you. Oh, you did so good at that. I like the way you brought that scripture out. Man, hey, keep it up. You understand? You gotta watch out for brothers and sisters like that. It's like, okay, I hear you, brother. All praises. Just watch it for what it is. Read on. And he that knoweth him will depart from him. That's when you get that level of spiritual discernment. Now, me, compared to somebody knowing the truth, is different. It's different. Because I've been in longer. So when it comes to spiritual discernment, I'm like, hey, all right, shalom. I'll smile. I was like, hey. But man, I'm watching you because I have enough spiritual understanding. That's another thing. It's funny. Brothers and sisters alike, they just, they don't think that this is real. They don't think that the spirit, that the spirit actually deals with men. They don't understand that thing. So they think that they can deceive men. Little do you know, your sins always find you out if you're not sincere. 
Listen, your sins will always find you out if you are not sincere. If you are sincere, a lot of times the Most High God will spare you because he knows you're serious and you're going to get it right. Listen, but then you got the other spirit who's not really trying to get it right and trying to deceive not only themselves, but others. And your day is coming. Drop the, no, no, no. Continue. Read down. Read down. Verse 23. When thou art present, he will speak sweetly. Wait. It says when you're present, that brother says they're going to speak really sweetly. Read. And will admire thy words. <laughs> man. Man, I like that precept you brought out. What you said. Oh, that was heavy. That, that was deep right there. Come on. But at the last, he will wither his mouth. Uh-huh. And slander thy sayings. Read. I have hated many things, but nothing like him. Ooh. Says, I have hated many things. There's a lot of things I hate, but it ain't nothing like a fake Negro. Boy, oh boy. It ain't nothing like a fake Negro. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Did I say fake niggas? Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all know y'all you can't stand a fake Negro. It's like, get away from me. You fake as hell. I don't want nothing to do with you. There's a lot of things you hate. I know when it, you get around Sodom, you're like, damn, that's just, that ain't right. That's a weird feeling. But a fake nigga, it's like, bruh, why even, why you even did that for? Why are you even around? Why are you even pretending, bruh? Like, go on with that. It ain't nothing like a fake Negro, bruh. Read that again. I have hated many things, Read. but nothing like him. For the Lord will hate him. For the Lord will hate him. Or her. Don't get it twisted. It's talking about you two sisters. All right, Amos 5 and 10. Amos chapter 5 and 10. All right, keep in mind, the title of today's class is The Spirit of Deceit. We getting there. We getting there. Read what you got. The book of Amos, chapter 5 and verse 10. Come on. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate. It says, they hate him that rebuketh in the gate. Who is that talking about? It's talking about the leaders. They hate when the leadership gives them the right counsel, but it is not pleasing to them. That's what deceitful people do. They hate that. Because ultimately, they want to please their lust. So they hate leaders who are going to tell them what is actually going to work out for their best benefit. Read on. And they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. All right, from there, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9. Why do, why do we read these examples in the scriptures? Because we are our forefathers. We're the same people. How do we know we're doing the same stuff all over again? At this point in time in the history, during the Assyrian going into the Babylonian captivity, they were doing, doing the same exact thing during the time of Isaiah. This is what he said. Read that. Isaiah chapter 30 verse 9. Come on. That this is a rebellious people. Read. Lying children. Come on. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord. Read. Which say to the seers. So they say unto their leaders. Read. See not. See not. Do not tell me about my sins. Don't tell me what I need to work on. Read. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Don't tell us what's really going to happen. Don't tell me if I continue to sin, I'm going to die. Don't, don't you dare say that. Read. Speak unto us smooth things. What do they want to hear, officer? Speak unto us smooth things. That's our people. That's our people, believe it or not. Even in the truth. Even, even in the truth, bruh, people still ain't trying to get it right. And I'm telling y'all, it's better, just like it's saying, Peter, it's better that you ain't even never, you better that you never even came in here. You should have just stayed in the world. It's much better that you should have stayed in the world. Because now, you know 100%. You know exactly what you're doing. Now, brothers and sisters, you can always repent. Maybe this class is talking about you. You say, you know what? I'm a fake nigga. And I don't want to be a fake nigga no more. So I need to change my ways. So if you's a fake nigga, stop being a fake nigga and be a righteous Israelite. 
You understand? Yes, sir. But we just gonna keep going, though. We gonna keep going. Give me Proverbs 12 and 15. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 15. Come on. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Meaning what? I know the order's in place, but it's not necessarily bad that I do it my way. Even though I know I should do it this way, I'm not sinning. That's what a wicked Negro would tell himself. That's what they would say. Read it again. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Come on. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Wait, 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 wait. Read that all the way through. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 15. Come on. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Read. But he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. The scriptures cannot be broken. The scriptures are undefeated. You have to understand that thing. If you listen to godly counsel, you are now counted wise. But if you forsake it and see things in your own eyes, you're called a fool. Because only a fool would go against God. The scripture says it's a dangerous thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So only a fool will despise godly counsel. It's that simple. When you really look at everything, God's commandments are not what? Deny. But the wicked Negro makes everything complex. He does. She does too. Psalms 141 and 5. Now, if you are trying to be a righteous Israelite, this is for you. Psalms chapter 141 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 141 and verse 5. Come on. Let the righteous smite me. Do what? Let the righteous smite me. So if you don't want to be counted as a fool, you better take that correction. Read it again. Let the righteous smite me. Come on. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. Read. Which shall not break my head. Come on. For yet. My prayer also shall be in their calamities. All right, so if you have any type of, how can I say, sincerity, you would listen to today's class. Listen to the scriptures that are being brought out and do what? You would apply yourself. From there, Psalms 120 and uh, verse 1. The book of Psalms 120 and verse 1. And you have to understand, brothers and sisters, all of us come into this thing sick. All of us come in here sick, so we have to do what? We literally have to pray that the Most High God deliver us from our demons. Because a lot of us was fake niggas in the world. A lot of us was whoremongers and thoughts. A lot of us were these covetous. A lot of us were drug addicts. A lot of us sold poison to our own people. But coming into repentance, brothers and sisters, we are not to continue to be the same people. We have to put the old man off and pray to the Father that he delivers us. If you are sincere. If you're sincere. Read that. The book of Psalms chapter 120 and verse 1. Come on. In my distress, I cried unto the Lord. So brothers and sisters, hey, I don't know about y'all, but I've been in distress where my spirit is warned against my flesh. If I'm the only one who could be real and say that, hey, something's wrong. Can you say that? That you've been in distress? What about you? Sir. If you're real, you'll be like, you know what? In distress means what? You're going through a serious battle. You're at a, you're at a low point. You're like, bruh, I don't want to do this no more. But it hurts. Your, your flesh is battling against your spirit. Read it again from the top. Psalms chapter 120 verse 1. Come on. In my distress, Read. I cried unto the Lord. Uh huh. And he heard me. And he what? He heard me. Brothers and sisters, when you are going through it, we must, we must cry unto the Lord. We must go before him and seek his face in our distress. When we hit those low points, every day won't be a low point, brothers and sisters. It's easy to pray when you ain't really in your trial right now. That's easy. 
You're not doing anything. You're not. Now, let's say now is your season. Now that lust demon's back. Now that smoking demon is back. Now that covetous demon is back. What are you going to do now? What are you going to do now? In your distress. That is that refining that the Most High is talking about in Sirach, the second chapter. Because it's easy to keep the commandments when you ain't being tempted. But in your distress, now that's what makes things a little difficult. You understand that the commandments, they're not hard. But what about if you're now being tried? What about now? Gets a little, gets a little difficult. Read it again. In my distress, I cry unto the Lord. Come on. And he heard me. Read. Deliver my soul. Do what? Deliver my soul. Come on. Oh Lord. From lying lips. From what? From lying lips. Read. And from a deceitful tongue. And from a what? A deceitful tongue. So brothers and sisters, if you're dealing with that in any magnitude, you have to pray. You must pray to get that spirit off of you. First Kings chapter 22. We're going to read some history. Lord's willing, we can take something from this history and apply it to our lives. First Kings 22, we start at verse 1. All right, this is the king of Israel. It was Ahab. All right, I want y'all to pay attention to the history. All right, read this. The book of First Kings, chapter twenty-two, verse one. Come on. And they continued three years without war between Syria and Israel. Come on. And it came to pass in the third year that Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, came down to the king of Israel. All right. So this is time. This is during the time of when the kingdoms were split. You had the kingdom of Judah which was Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, and you had the, uh, the, king, the kingdom of Israel, which was the northern ten tribes, all right? Now, King Jehoshaphat, during this time, came unto King Ahab. Read. Verse 3, And the king of Israel said unto his servants, Know ye that Ramoth in Gilead is ours. So this is King Ahab going off of his own opinions, his own thoughts. He said, hey, I don't know if y'all heard, but Ramoth, Gilead, that's ours now. That's what he's saying. We. And we be still and take it not out of the hand of the king of Syria. So they're saying, bro, why are we waiting? We can just go fight against the king of Syria and take it. Read. And he said unto Jehoshaphat, Will thou go with me to battle to Ramoth Gilead? Read. And Jehoshaphat said to the king of Israel, I am as thou art, my people as thy people, my horses as thy horses. That's why, and today, uh, you got Southern Kingdom rejecting the Northern Kingdom tribes. We're the same people. We're the exact same people. Read. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Come on. Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Uh-huh. Then king of Israel gathered the prophets together. So he gathered all of his prophets together. That's what he did. Because what you'll see in Israel, you'll see brothers and sisters develop what you call cliques. They develop these cliques because why? All of their spirits are alike. It don't mean that their spirit is right. You understand? But their spirits may be alike. Meaning, when they say this, oh girl, I agree. They like that. They like that somebody is agreeing with what they're agreeing with. Read it again. Verse 6. Then the king of Israel gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, Read. and said unto them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to battle? Or shall I forbear? Read. And they said, go up, for the Lord shall deliver it into the hand of the king. So they told him, yeah, go ahead, king. Hell yeah. Go take that thing. Read. And Jehoshaphat said, is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides that we might inquire of him? But you see, you know, Judah, we saying, I don't know. Let's make sure about this thing. What's... Let's make sure it's not some of your men. Let's just go with a prophet who's not biased, who has nothing to gain or lose. Let's, let's see about this. Read that part again. Verse 7. Come on. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? Read. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Come on. There is yet one man. He said, Ah, dang. I was hoping you was going to ask that. Ah, right, yeah, I know. I know a prophet, man. I know a prophet. Read. Micaiah, the son of the son of Inla, by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. But what? But I hate him. Why? 
did Ahab hate him? Read. For he doth not prophesy good concerning me. Wow, that's Israel right there. Because he doesn't prophesy, or he doesn't tell you what you want to hear. You're doing a good job, but really you're doing horrible. Oh yeah, that's me. I'll never tell you you're doing good when you're doing bad. I probably won't always come at you like, bro, you're really freaking up. Sometimes I'm nicer than other times. But I'm going to tell you like it is. Because I don't care what you think. That's not my job. My job is to do what? Lead the people. And righteousness, that's my job. My job is not to be like, because I understand that what? They hate, they killed the prophets. That's what they did. So in like manner, it probably will happen to me. It's going to happen. Read it again. Verse 8, come on. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is one, there is yet one man, Micaiah, the son of Imla, come on, by whom we may inquire of the Lord. Read. But I hate him, come on, for he doth not prophesy good concerning me. But evil. Read. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. Read. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Hastered hither, Micaiah the son of Imla. So he said, Hey, go get go get the prophet. Jump down to verse 12. Verse 12. Come on. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper. For the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. So those are Ahab's prophets. Those are his men. They're saying it again. Hey, king, go up. Don't listen to all of that. Read. And the messenger that was gone to call Micaiah spake unto him, saying, Behold now, the words of the prophets declare good unto the king with one mouth. Let thy word, I pray thee, be like the word of one of them, and speak that which is good. Read. And Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord said unto me, that will I speak. So he's saying, I'm not going to speak what you want to hear. I'm going to speak what God told me to speak. Read. So he came to the king, and the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go against Ramoth Gilead to battle, or shall we forbear? And he answered him, go and prosper. Read. And the king said unto him, how many times shall I adjure thee? that thou tell me nothing but that which is true in the name of the Lord. Read. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Uh, read on. And the king of Israel said, to, said unto Jehoshaphat, did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Come on. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. All right, so we digress a little bit. So now he's in the spirit. All right, he's seeing this in the spirit. Now remember all of Ahab's men, right? Now we're going to read about his men right here in the spirit. Pay attention to this part. Read. Verse 20, and the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab? Who shall do what? Persuade Ahab. So, who said that? Who said that? The Lord. The Lord said that. Read it again. And the Lord said, who shall persuade Ahab? That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. That he may do what? Go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. That he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead. Because he doesn't want to do what's right. He has a track record of going against the Most High. So the Most High God allowed him to do what? Allowed him to hear what? Things that he wanted to hear. Y'all follow me? Yes, sir. All right, I want to make sure y'all follow me. Read that verse again. Verse 20. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. Come on. And there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth, and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. In the mouth of what? Of all his prophets. Read. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. So this goes unto the brothers and sisters that want to forsake the way. Sometimes, because of your wickedness, 
And because of your track record for not wanting to do it the, the right way, the most I got, he's going to send those spirits to you. So you will believe a lie, like it says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 11. Who knows what I'm talking about? Read it real quick. And it will come right back. The book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 9. Come on. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And what? Lying wonders. Read. And with all deceivableness. All what? All deceivableness. Read. Of unrighteousness and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth. Because you don't want to follow the right way, meaning what? You don't love God's laws, which is the truth. Read. That they might be saved. And for this cause. And for that cause, by not wanting to seek the right way, read. God shall send them strong delusion. Who shall send them this delusion? God shall send them strong delusion. That they might what? That they should believe a lie. That they should believe a lie. And we ain't even really get into the spirit of deceit class yet. But I want y'all to understand something, brothers and sisters. When you come into this truth and you know you ain't trying to do what's right, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. You will get jacked up. That's what the Bible says. Let's go back. First Kings chapter 22, verse 23. Come on. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Uh, jump down to verse 29. Verse 29. Come on. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to Ramoth Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle. But put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. Read. But the king of Syria commanded this, his thirty and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, Fight neither with small nor great, save only with the king of Israel. So he said, make sure we get this to him. Because he spotted him out. Even though he tried to disguise himself, the king of, a, king of Assyria spotted out Ahab. Read. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, Surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. Come on. And Jehoshaphat cried out. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, that they turned back from pursuing him. And, and a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Read. Wherefore, he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thine hand and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. Uh, verse 37. Verse 37. So the king died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria. All right, all right. So we read that history to show when you don't receive... But don't, how can I say, you don't love correction, you don't love seeking the right way, sometimes the most high God say, you know what, I had enough. I now had enough, brother or sister. Now I'm going to send you some spirits, you're going to take heed to them, and that's going to be your rule. Strong chapter 15 verse, 13 verse 15. 13 verse 15. And this brings us to another point in the class. Brothers and sisters, you got to watch out when everybody is agreeing with you. You got to watch that. You have to watch that spirit. You always have to line up your relationships in this truth with the Bible. A lot of, I heard a brother say before, because a brother corrected him on his lust, he say, I, I gotta watch out for you. Wait, 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 what do you mean, brother? I should, be, I, should, I should be thanking you for correcting me for my error. Brothers and sisters, y'all gotta watch out for friendship. Friendship will not uh, tell you when you're going off. But a brother or sister, they're going to be there for you. They're going to tell you which way to go. Brother or sister, don't do that. Don't do this. They're going to lead you down the right path. Yeah, read that. The book of Sirach, chapter 13 and verse 15. Come on. Every beast loveth his life, and every man loveth his neighbor. All flesh consorteth according to kind. All what? All flesh consorteth 
according to kind. All right, you wonder why certain spirits cling to others. Sometimes it's because of righteousness. Sometimes it's because of pure evil. And we see it. We see it. But the scripture also says, judge nothing before the time. All right? From there, jump down to, uh, let's go to Sirach 28. We'll drop that. Sirach chapter 28, and I want you to start at verse 17. We'll read down a little bit. The spirit of deceit. All right, we're, we're about to dive into it for a little bit. 28 and uh, 17. Sirach chapter 28 and verse 17. Come on. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. It says, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Oh, yeah, we always use this precept. Y'all heard in the world, uh, what do it say? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's a lie. That's a lie. That's a big lie. Read that again. Sirach chapter 28, verse 17. Come on. The stroke of the whip maketh marks in the flesh, but the stroke of the tongue breaketh the bones. Read. Many have fallen by the edge of the sword, but not so many have fallen by the tongue. Read. Well is he that is defended from it. Now this can go both ways. Not just those on the receiving end, the one who speaks it as well. What does it say in James? It says life and death is in the tongue. So it's not just the person on the receiving end. It's the person whose lips it's going out of. Read that verse again. Verse 19. Well is he that is defended from it. Remember um, what King David prayed for in Psalms 120? He prayed against a lying tongue and, and, a, and deceiving lips. That's what he prayed against. All right, read and have not passed through the venom thereof. Uh-huh. Who have not drawn the yoke thereof, nor have been bound in her bands. It says, who's not been guilty of this at one point in time? It says that in um, Ecclesiastes, who hasn't slipped that tongue? Meaning what? At one point in time, everybody in this room has told a lie and deceived somebody. That's what it's saying. Read. For the yoke thereof is a yoke of iron, and the bands thereof are bands of brass. Come on. The death thereof is an evil death. Read. The grave were better than it. it. Says the grave were better than it. So it means if you're rolling in that deceitful spirit, that's going to be bad for you. That's what it's saying right there. Read. It shall not have rule over them that fear God. But those who are trying to get themselves right, it's not. Why? Because we're going to pray. All right, we're going to be circumspect. We're not going to deal like that. Read. Neither shall they be burned with the flame thereof. Neither are you going to have to get jacked up because you're trying to overcome that thing. Read. Such as forsake the Lord shall fall into it. But if you want to continue to forsake godly counsel and the ways of God, read. And it shall burn in them. It shall what? It shall burn in them. Read. And not be quenched. Come on. It shall be sent upon them as a lion. Read. And devour them as a leper. You're going to get destroyed. You're going to get destroyed if you don't repent from that spirit. Psalms chapter 101. Psalms chapter 101. Just got a little bit more. In verse 7. Psalms chapter 101, verse 7. Come on. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Read that again. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Uh-huh. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. So the Bible says if you're rolling in the spirit of deceit, you are, you're not going to make the kingdom. That's straight. It's straight up. Unless you repent. But it said if you want to continue to roll in that spirit, you will not make the kingdom. Read it again. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Uh -huh. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Shall not tarry in thy sight. So let's go to another example in the history. Let's go to the book of Joshua chapter 6 and verse 16. We're going to read about a brother named Akon. Akon and young Jesus. I ain't talking about the brother who made the track with young Jesus. I'm talking about one of our ancestors. Akon. All right. We're going to start at chapter 6 and verse 16. This is when uh, we were going to conquer various lands that the Most High God uh, promised us. All right, we had to get through Jericho. So this is the leaving off of that. 
going into um, what's about to become of Akon. Read this. The book of Joshua, chapter 6, verse 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord hath given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot, excuse me, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. Read on. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take off the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse, and trouble it. All right, so here's the point. Here's the point of the story right here. I want you to read verse 18 again. Listen close. Verse 18. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed, when ye take off the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel a curse. So it's saying, if you go against this commandment, and you take the accursed thing, this is talking about the spoils of the ba Babylonians. If you take that cursed curse thing and bring it back to the camp of Israel, not only are you a curse, now you're doing what? What, what else did it say? Everybody else around you. So not only are you selfish enough to put that danger or that evil on yourself, you reckless enough to put your whole nation in danger. All right, chapter 7, verse 1. Joshua chapter 7 verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. There you go. Read. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And it's not about which tribe. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's not about which tribe did it. It was done, you understand? So, we're not getting caught up in that, all right? Now, let's go to verse 6. Let's go to verse 6. Verse 6. Uh -huh. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide. He and the elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Read. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, Wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side Jordan? Come on. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? Read. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall ever, excuse me, and shall Enron us around and cut off our name from the earth. Read. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? Come on. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? All right, so there's the point. Verse 11. Israel hath sinned. Israel has what? Israel hath sinned. So Joshua's like, Father, why is this happening to us? Why are we losing? Why are we such a low point? And the Most High answers Joshua in verse 11 and says, Israel had sinned. And who did it? Who's responsible for that sin? It didn't, because we didn't read about the whole camp of Israel sinning. Who sinned? Who? Not Joshua, but Akon. Remember in verse 1? It said Akon. Akon. Now read verse 11 again. Verse 11. Israel had sinned, and they have also trusted the grass. Excuse me. I read Ooh. Hmm. Read that again. Joshua chapter 7 verse 11. Come on. Israel had sinned, and they also transgressed my covenant, Read. which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Amongst their own stuff. Good on. Joshua chapter 7 verse 4. So there went up, excuse me, so there went up thither of the people about 3,000 men, and they fled before the men of Ah. And the men of Ah smote of them about 36 men. 
For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sh Sh Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And became as water. All right, I mean, you see, um, because of that deceitfulness of Akon the Judite, um, God put, I'm just saying that Judah been still for a long time. But uh, besides that, <laughs> um, for his uh, deceitfulness, uh, the Most High put his brothers to uh, death. All right, imagine um, how you um, should feel in that situation. Right. Of you stealing and being deceitful, lying, and then your brother that you see every Sabbath and you go to war with is put to death over what you did. Imagine the wickedness and the evil behind that thing. It is an evil to, it is an evil thing to deal with your people that way. All right, I can bring our precept. Real quick. Go to um, Proverbs 12, real quick. Go ahead and touch on that. Proverbs 12. We're gonna start at 18, I want to say, or 19. I'm start at 19. I'm start at 18. Let's see. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, and verse verse 18. Uh -huh. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. All right, on the words is on the going into a uh, scripture the officer brought earlier. Words are hurt you. All right, I know they say on sticks and stones, but words ain't never hurt you. That's a lie. All right, on the on the words, uh, uh, can crush your spirit. All right, I'm read on. But the tongue of the wise is healing. Okay, health, baby. Yeah. I'll read it again. Let's try it again. Verse 18. There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is health. Uh, but the tongue of the wise is health. And that's what we all got to um, try to get to. That wisdom and on how you know how to deal with your brothers. Speak to your brothers and your sisters. All right, it's going to build them up. Or it could tear somebody down. Read on. Verse 19. The lip of truth shall be established forever. And that's what you want to go after. All right. Truth in your speech. All right. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to be honest. All right. If you can't do something or you didn't do something when you should have, I mean, just be honest about it. Read. But a lying tongue is but for a moment. And that lying tongue, it ain't going to last that long. Um, especially in this walk right here, on the liars and deceivers are always found out. Oh, every time. All right, if you're being sneaky and you talking to people where you ain't supposed to be talking, or you is on the looking at system where you ain't supposed to be doing this, all of it is gonna come to light. I'm read. Verse twenty: Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. And if you have the spirit on you, you gotta check yourself. Are you evil as hell? Because uh, God said, I want to read it again. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. If you're being deceitful, you're evil as hell. That's what God says. It's in your heart. It's in your mind. All right, I want to read. But to the counselors of peace is joy. Uh huh. There shall no evil happen to the just. Read. But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Uh, 22 now. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Are what to the Lord? Are abomination to the Lord. Uh -huh. But they that deal truly are his delight. So when you're being deceitful, um, God sees you as that abomination. A flat out liar. Let me say something to that last part, officer. I'm glad you pulled that verse 22. It says, but they that deal truly are his delight. Those who are actually real with themselves. That means that you are sincere. Meaning what? If you messed up, you are, you have godly sorrow. Give me that. 2 Corinthians 7 and 9. Or just read 10. That means you actually have godly sorrow. Akon did not have godly sorrow. He wanted to keep that thing to himself. He wouldn't have said nothing unless it came out. He wouldn't have said it. 2 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance. Worketh what? Worketh repentance. But... Those who deal deceitfully, they don't have godly sorrow. Because they're just doing it, trying not to get caught. They're not trying to get the medicine. They're just trying not to get caught. 
Read. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. The sorrow of the world, you get caught up in your various lusts, that's going to bring forth death. Now, let's go back to uh, Joshua 6. No, 7. Joshua 7. I want you to jump down. Read verse 11 on down. Read a little faster. Joshua chapter 7 verse 11. Israel had sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen, and disassembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Read. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore. So the most I say, he can't be with us. If we are the spirit, the most high God, he can't be with us. For example, if we got evil amongst us, the most high God, he got to shake the tree. Some brothers and sisters, they, they cover for to be pulled. It's about to be revealed. So the most high can bless us again. So your wicked be behind God's to go. So the righteous spirits can come in and fill the most high's house. Read. Except ye destroy the accursed from among you. You got to do what? Dish destroy the accursed from among you. So those who are working in a deceitful and lying spirit, they got to be removed from among us. Amongst us. Read. Up, sanctify the people, and say, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. Come on. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. See how the Most High always reveals it, though? That's the funny part. The Most High God, you don't even have to be doing that. Da -da 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 -da. Alright, look at this. Oh, wow. Really? I didn't even know that was going on. That's crazy. We, if y'all, we don't look for it. It just happens. That's how the Most High does it. Just like he does with his prophets. He, if anything's supposed to be exposed, it's going to come out. Nothing you can do. Myself included. None of us are exempt. Nobody's exempt from that. Read. Oh, Israel, thou canst not stand before thine enemies until you take away the accursed thing from among you. Come on. In the morning... Therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. Read. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. Read on. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burned with fire. Shall be what? Be burned with fire. Then we just read that, that fire in um, Sirach 27. Wait, 28. We just read about that fire in Sirach 28 for being deceitful and having a lying tongue. Read that part again. 15. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. Come on. He and all that he hath. Read. Because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord and because he hath walked fully in Israel. Jump down to verse 19. Verse 19, And Joshua said unto Achan, my son, Give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. Come on. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Achan was probably like, Bro, nobody was there, bro. How do you know? Damn, all right, damn. All right, I'll admit to it. All right, I did. Read. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels, wait, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. Read. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran unto the tent and behold, it was hid in his tent, Come on. and the silver under it. Read. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord. Read. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan, the son of Zerah, and the silver, and the garment, and the wedge of gold, and his sons. And his what? And his sons. Read. And his daughters. Come on. And his oxen and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them unto the valley of Achor. Read. And Joshua said, 
Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. Come on. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt them. With and burnt what? And burnt them. Just him. Burnt them. So him and his whole family got stoned and burned. Read. With fire. After they had stoned them with stones. Read. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the so the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of that place was called. So once the evil was destroyed, then the most high God said, Alright, back to normal. I can bless you again. I can bless you again. From there, I want to touch Proverbs 12 and 5. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 5. We almost done. Wasn't going to be a long class today. Just had to touch this. Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 5. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 12 verse 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Meaning what? The law came out that for us, for us not to touch the accursed thing. But he saw fit otherwise had his own counsel means what he forsake the way he forsook the way from there give me um second ezra 16 and 63 the book of second ezra chapter 16 verse 63 come on surely he knoweth your invention so when it comes to the counsel of deceit god what surely he knoweth your inventions didn't he Know the inventions of Akon? Didn't we just read about that in the book of Joshua, the seventh chapter? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So read it again. Surely he knoweth your inventions. Read. And what ye think in your hearts. And what you think in your hearts. Come on. Even them that sin. Read. And would hide their sin. And would hide their sin. Meaning what? Brothers and sisters, we all sin. We all sin. But, bruh, if you're just going to do it, and not try to get no help, hey, you're a dangerous person. You gotta, you gotta ask for the help. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right, read it again from the top. Verse 63. Surely he knoweth your inventions, and what ye think in your hearts, read. even them that sin, and would hide their sin. Come on. Therefore, has the Lord exactly searched out all your works, so God searched out all the Akon's words, read. And he will put you all to shame. He put him to open shame in front of all Israel. He got stoned, not just him, him and his family, and they got burnt to death. After they died, then they got burnt up. All right. Uh, from there, let's go to Numbers chapter 32, verse 23. The book of Numbers chapter 32 and verse 23. Come on. But if he will not do so, behold, Ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure, your sin will find you out. Your what? Your sin will find you out. I like the emphasis you put on that, soldier. I mean, officer. Your sin will find you out, brothers and sisters. That's why you need to be sincere. You need to be sincere. If you in here faking the funk, if you ain't being real with yourself, all right, matter of time. And you're going to get put out. It is what it is. All right, but be sincere. All right, Proverbs 20 and 17. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 17. The book of Proverbs chapter 20, verse 17. Come on. Bread of deceit is sweet to a man, but afterwards his mouth shall be filled with gravel. What is that mouth filled with gravel? What is that talking about? Uh, let me, Brother Court. Just saying that you'll be dead. Yeah. That's right. Gosh, tall. It's a car filled that day. That's exactly what it's talking about. When you get buried in the dirt, your mouth could be filled with gravel. That's what it's talking about. Read it again. Bread of deceit is sweet. Uh oh. Keyword ding, 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 ding. Bread. You know what I'm thinking? It's around 3rd, 23, uh, 17. You know what else goes with that? Whoremonger. Whoremonger. Because think about it. Whoremongers, you got a spirit of whoremongering, you definitely going to be doing things on the low. You're going to be real deceitful. 
Let's see if these if the Bible's precept with Paul precept. Read that real quick. Sirach chapter 23 and verse 17. Come on. All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Wait, wait, wait a minute. I hope y'all see how sins go hand in hand. If you're rolling in that spirit, it's basically nothing you won't do. There's nothing you won't do. It says in uh, Proverbs 20 and 17, bread of deceit is sweet. Read what you got, Judge All bread is sweet to a whoremonger. Come on. He will not leave off till he die. He will not leave off until he what? Till he die. Precept upon precept. Right. Meaning what? That's confirmation, brothers and sisters. That's confirmation. Anybody that acts in it, this, this class is going out, it ain't me. Spirit of the Most High. If you don't like it, I don't care. Repent or die. That's right. That end of the day, repent or die. That's Get right. over it. Fix it. Be righteous. Stop being fake. Nobody likes a fake Negro. You like fake Negroes? Because I don't. That's why I repented, so I ain't got to deal with fake Negroes no more. I don't know about y'all, when you came into the truth, it was like, finally. I ain't got to deal with uh, sister so-and-so in the Christian church, always talking mess about people. Sister so-and-so sleeping with this man's husband. Didn't when y'all come in these doors, y'all tired of that mess? That's right. That's why I left the Christian church. It's, church. it's a contradiction. That's right. Fallacies. Nothing but fakeness. But when you come in Israel, you want to bring that garbage back in here. If you want that spirit, get the hell out. Because you're going to get gravel anyway. Just leave now. But if you want to stay, let's get this kingdom. That's Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.